All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are not looking at other people's work. We're not looking at your work. We're looking at my work. What? <gasps> I have a job outside of just this channel. Does it exist? Is it true? Uh, yeah, still, kind of. Uh, we're actually going to go back to the year of our Lord, 2015. Actually, it might have been 2014. Can't remember. It was a long time ago. And we're going to look at a commercial that I shot then that is basically responsible for my entire career after that. Every single job that I got for the next 12 months referenced this ad. And it's going to be fun because we're going to look at it. And now with hindsight, we can see that I had no idea what I was doing. In fact, I got almost every shot wrong and was still able to pull something together that was halfway decent. Now, would I do anything the same? today as I did in this ad? No, I do it completely differently. Number one, I probably wouldn't be on the trip anyway, because it was just four of us. It was nine countries in seven days with a director, a producer, myself, and a camera assistant. We didn't bring any grip gear. We didn't bring any lights. We didn't bring anything. We brought the camera, which was an, a red epic, the first one, uh, which again, I had no idea what I was doing with that thing. And then we had three sets of 1960 Russian Lomo square fronts. If you know about those lenses, you will know that that is not the smartest production move I could have ever made. And in fact, one of the lenses, the only lens that we ever actually used for the last half of the shoot, uh, froze when we were outside in the snow because again, we had no idea what we were doing, but somehow we managed to piece it together. Now, before we look at this video, or before we look at this clip, uh, I should say that this week and this week alone, now that I know what I'm doing after 10 years of doing commercials, now that I know what I'm doing, I built a course to talk about what I know. And I talk about exactly what I do, not just how do you make the pretty pictures, where do you put the lamp, where do you set the neg, where do you, how do you adjust the aperture, all that kind of stuff, none of that. Uh, in the advanced cinematography course, I go through every single decision from start to finish of what I do. I don't know if other commercial cinematographers do this, but it's what I do on every single job, right? You have to make decisions. I talk about the decisions that I'm going to make. We film an ad. We go through the entire process from start to finish. This is me guiding you along with me every single decision from reading the first director's treatment to the first conversations with the producers and the directors to uh, crewing up to doing schedules to location scouts to tech scouts all the things that I want to have lined up for each occasion and why I do it then and why I do it that way in particular because I've been burned on X, Y, or Z project and now forever and forward I will do it this way. I go through that entire process. Then we go on set in a virtual environment. You see through the camera with me as we talk about adjustments to shots that I would make. We talk about how those adjustments then affect the schedule, what equipment I'm going to need, what crew I'm going to need. Uh, and then we go through and we film the actual spot. You get to see the final images and you see every single decision along the way. Now, this course, Advanced Cinematography, it's available for one week. Right? I make it available for one week each year because other than that, this is too much information for your average Joe or Jane out there looking to get into cinematography. Right, You have to be pretty far down the dork rabbit hole of wanting to be a cinematographer but not quite getting there. And I made this course because I was in the exact same position of someone that needed this course 10 years ago. If I would have had <laughs> this course before doing this job, this job would have come up significantly uh, nicer looking and it would have been a much easier experience, unfortunately didn't have that. So with that being said, let's jump in and have a little look. We'll watch together. This is a story of this young lady and uh, she's going to be running around the world. Now you'll notice first up, like, am I going to stop it every single time? This, <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea. Again, because if you can imagine, uh, this entire thing was done in 2000, I think it was 2014, on the original Ronin with the red epic camera and Russian anamorphic lenses, right? Barely, the thing barely balanced. And half the time when you turned it on, maybe it turns on, maybe it just shits itself. Like we were so uh, horribly, horribly organized uh, and just on the cutting edge of the technology and pushing it to the boundaries. And then we didn't quite get there in the end, but it made changing lenses a huge pain, a huge, enormous nightmare of a situation. <laughs> so uh, once we stuck one lens on there in a specific location, uh, it was, it was not easy getting the thing off. So what do we do here? I thought it would be a genius idea, right? Right out the gate. Let's start the ad with this beautiful close-up moment 
of this girl as she's realizing she's about to run across the world. Why don't we put the 35 millimeter anamorphic lens on? Now, if you know anything about anamorphic lenses and wide anamorphic lenses, uh, probably not your classic go-to lens here. I probably wouldn't shoot this on a 35 millimeter because look what it does to this poor lady's face, right? It makes it so uh, distorted. Whereas if you look at the end of the ad, I think let's go to this one, where some her actual face is. This is what her face actually looks like, okay? That's her face on an 80 millimeter lens. This is her face on a 35 millimeter. Now you get to see a lot of the background. And in fact, that's probably not a good thing, right? Probably not a good thing to see that much background, but also no backlight. Like, okay, I'm not going to stop at every single thing and talk about it, but you'll get a glimpse into my inner monologue as I'm looking at my own footage here. Uh, okay. So here she goes. She's running around the world at sunset. Oh, blown out sky. Her head wasn't even in that shot. That was actually the reset of the Ronin machine. She's running Singapore, New York, uh, looking up, turn, quick panic. Now the entire time, imagine me on a Klassen slingshot. If you don't know what a Klassen slingshot is, I'll have to get a shot and put it on top here. Me running around with the, the Ronin and these two giant rubber band things holding it up and uh, yeah, doing nine countries in seven days and having no location scouts, no tech scouts, no nothing, just show up and we have to shoot. This shot in particular, that shot right there, that shot probably got me uh, a year's worth of work, right? At least this one particular shot right there, because it goes on for a little bit longer as well. Uh, we're in the snow. This is where the lens is locked up and uh, freeze. The whole world stops. There's fish. That's where Roger Deakins shot in time in that little LA theater, which looks significantly better in his film than it does in ours. And it's snowing and we're out. She realizes, oh, ta-da, man, come on. First of all, I didn't even know here. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing when we're looking at this thing? I didn't even know. I didn't know how to make this image look nice. <laughs> I was just like, well, uh, let's shoot into, uh, you know, a dark bit of background and we'll have the snow. Uh, can we get the snow backlit? Uh, I didn't guess that. Again, we're out in the middle of nowhere, Vermont. We got in that morning. We're filming two hours after we land and we're going to Palm Springs in six hours. So on the ground here, we've got eight hours to get a whole sequence of snow stuff. Not the easiest in terms of time. We finally find a little spot on the side of the road. This is not glorious or, uh, you know, we haven't seen a thousand of these location scout pictures and they haven't all been uh, gone over by the agency and the director and everything like that. No, just the director, the producer, myself uh, going, hey, uh, if we pull over to the side of the road here, we don't have to drive as far away from the airport, which means we can probably make our plane. And here, what nowadays, what would I do? Well, I'd go backlight. So I'd turn her face more, right? Because you can see just here, zhoop, that is the ambient sky that is leaking through. There's a couple trees, sets of trees on this side and this side. Uh, but that ambient key, because it was a slightly overcast, is leaking through. Overcast. Oh, well, it's snowing. So you need clouds for snow. A little science tip there for you. But this I would try and eliminate because we can't really see where we are orientation-wise as to all the action that has come before this. Right? She's running through the snow here. Let's see. Running through the snow. Uh, more snow shots. Like here. I'm not going to stop at everyone, am I? Like where's the shape, Patrick? What are we doing here? Why is it so flat? Why not just pack one or every spot that you stop in? Just have one floppy. Can I get one four by four floppy? And this image becomes so much nicer. Why is it so flat? Why? Make it not flat, please. That's why it's boring. Like you're looking at it, you're going, why is it so flat? Here, same thing. What are we doing? Why, why is there so much level here? Like, make it backlit. I know it's overcast. I know it's snowing. But make it backlit. Like, let's get some edge here so that this outfit doesn't just bleed into over here. Come on. And we come around. Okay, and now we got a little bit of density. Oh, go back just a hair. But like this, I would just turn her. Turn her. Uh, well, she's going to turn this way. Or, yeah, she turns that way. We crab that way. And then we're shooting more that way. So this light here is more all the way behind her. 
and then just bring that floppy out of the van that you packed away, right? That you didn't bring on a trip around the world. A little floppy can make this an image just like this size. So nice, so easy. You've already got the soft light from the sky for the ambient key, right? You just need a little bit of level. And I stumbled into, well, at least the background is dark, right? So immediately makes her jump out. And also, this is the first time the entire trip that we were able to get her to stand still so we could actually nail focus. I wasn't like, well, is it in focus? I don't know. <laughs> we're moving this class in slingshot rig everywhere. The gimbal is shitting itself every two seconds. Like I swore off the gimbal for three years after this project because it was such a nightmare uh, to work with. Finally, we were able to get her in focus and off she runs. But man, you could, I, I, I'd slick this up a little bit more now, right? I'd get a little bit more level out of this side. I'd bring way the darkness way down in here. I'd try and get a little eye light in there for sure. And I'd just add more crunch altogether. So let's go back to the beginning here. There's our 35 millimeter. Oh, geez, Louise. Now that's, you know, that's not bad. But again, it's front lit. And I could very easily take steps to make this not front lit, right? Like she is, she's actually standing in the position that she is standing in here. So she's standing in the exact same spot. Now, that's a rookie move <laughs> because we never have to see over here, right? Over here behind her, that shot that we used for the close-up, like you don't even see it there. She's standing in the, like she's actually standing there for that first close-up and then she's actually standing there for that last shot. She doesn't have to stand in any of those spots. Why don't we just put her in the best light, especially if we're on our own? <laughs> why don't we put her in the best light here? Which is why don't we go this way to get her backlit like the other side of the campus we come out here boom she should be parked over there right we should have chose this background because we never see you over here <laughs> what are we doing <laughs> what am i doing why did i do that <sighs> and then here this would have been a classic mistake of mine like i'm f i'm trying to think okay i'm filling in this level here like anybody cares about the back of this lady rather than exposing for the sky right? This giant blob over here. This is where you would have liked that extra stop or two in an Alexa. But even in an Alexa, I probably would have screwed this up because my guess is, I can't remember back 10 years ago to remember the settings. But at the time, I, I'm guessing that I would have been like, oh, uh, you know, we want the thickest digital negative. So we're going to starve the sensor of light, meaning we're going to lower the ISO. And I'm going to lower the ISO. That means more light hitting the sensor to get the same exact exposure relative to the monitor. And then little did I know that I was chopping my already terrible uh, dynamic range in half when I did that. So going from 800 to 400 and then probably on the Dragon to down to 320. It's like now I'm at 320. Now my six stops in the highlights is now down to four and a bit. And that's red math. So really, you've got two stops in the highlights. And this whole thing goes pear-shaped, right? It'd be way better if this had way more detail in it. Also, the whole shot would be better schedule-wise. Either, either we're going to have some interest here, like on the building. So that means the sun comes up here, rises, and has like some sort of slash or backlight here for her. But Or the sun is going to be down here. So we can actually expose for the sky and still have flatness everywhere. But we didn't get either of that. We got the worst of both worlds, which is the sun is actually in the shot, which then blows out this whole area around the sun. Yet the sun isn't high enough to create any contrast in the foreground. So there's no, there's no hard light. It's just like one bleh across the frame. <laughs> what was I doing? Mistakes were made. Okay, then here we're running. And again, I'm not like, you know, we didn't have grips or lighting or anybody. It's quite flat here, this. Like, where is the... There's not a lot of level here. Here, there is level, but we had to tame it back so much in the grade because it was so hot. Like, that sun was so hot out there. It's like, at least I'm on the right side of the line, though. You know, like, this side of the line, this is always going to be terrible. Why? Because we're looking into where the light is pushing from. Not from... It's, it can't come from behind because this building's here. And there's nothing interesting about this building because it's so flat. <laughs> okay, so we're not winning yet. There, I mean, that's a hard shot. And we're bang right into the sun. This little connector. Oh, man, here we go. Same problem. 
I would have crank. I should nowadays. What I would do is I would crank the ISO to 2000. I would set my exposure for the little dot in the sun that I would want. I'd stop way down, like T11s, uh, because we don't need the shallow depth of field. It's not giving us anything here. We don't need the exposure either because we're setting for the sky. And I'd probably, if I could, I would schedule us not to be here when this was happening. I'd schedule to be here when it's either just below the horizon, so I'm not getting that, or just above the frame, right? Like I would come down in height, what are we doing with all of this headroom? It was on like, just so you know. <laughs> I'm not actively trying to frame like this. It's on like that mimic mode on the original Ronin. It was like, took like 45 seconds for it to respond to you. So you're just guessing. And then I'm running <laughs> in the sand <laughs> next to her. Oh man, what a disaster. So I was good for about five steps before I was dead. Uh, but here, easy way to cure this. Jack up the ISO. That way you starve the, the sensor for light. Uh, that way you have way more dynamic range in the highlights. And then you can bring this down later. And then I'd bring this down. Then I'd bring the back of her down in the grade. Like just to create, we need to create contrast rather than just this giant flat blob. What are we doing here with our, see even here, like see how much fill? Where's the back of her? This compared to that, it's too close. It's two samesies. So we got to, let's stretch that out a little bit. Let's get, if I had a full crew here, I'd be like, let's run. If we go backwards here, down this side of our track, let's run as much neg as we possibly have. And then actually let's change the angle of her running slightly. So she's running more out there. And then we'll run this way, miss this. So we can just pan the camera left over to the actual city. And we just show her running towards the city as opposed to running along the water right into this thing. But man, I would neg everywhere, everywhere neg. And then I would say in the meeting, in the pre-production meeting where we're talking about these things going like, okay, who's going to be on the team? Well, it's going to be you, uh, Bob, the director, Larry is going to be on the camera assistant. And then, uh, you know, Jack, our producer and be like, nobody else. I'm like, nope, that's it. Okay, what about for the stuff? Because this is in the town that I live in. Like, we can't bring somebody out for a day. Let's bring a grip out for a day to put up the neg. Like, that's something that we should do. We'll definitely get our return on investment for one person being able to manipulate these blacks. The images will be so much better. But I didn't know. Here's another thing. We got out into the desert. This is after we had done the entire trip. Then we went out to do this desert stuff. Uh, this was the only time, well, set two times, we had the, instead of the, Ronan being on me and me carrying the thing around. <laughs> uh, we actually were able to mount it on the car and then control it from the car. But you had that old little control thing. So this little snap, like uh, tilt up, that's actually me hitting the button to recenter the Ronan. So it's like here, I just recentered it. <laughs> and then they use that in the edit. Uh, now, this is better. Like this is better, but man, I would... And now grade wise and look wise, I would take this way down, way, 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 way down, much too flat for me. Same. This is a great, <laughs> this is, there's a good story behind this. I've told it on the podcast before. Uh, so we stop in New York. We don't have much time. We got an amazing locations person on this job. And he knew everything about everything. And again, this is 2015. This is before, like you had your mood boards that you could create with Frame.io and, uh, sorry, not Frame.io. Uh, what's uh, Frame Set or what's the other one? Shot Deck, uh, where you have the classic pictures of New York. <laughs> so, you know, imagine telling the locations guy, like we need, it needs to be iconic New York. Like that's how it's got to feel. We don't have time to look around. We've got three hours tonight and then tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. we're shooting. So we have to find all these locations. We're gonna have to do it in the dark. It's like, okay, but we don't want to use the same old locations that everybody uses, right? We're coming from, <laughs> we're coming from Australia. We think we're going to find like a unique look inside of New York. And I can just imagine the locations guy, because when we saw this place, we're like, oh, this is it. <laughs> like, this is, this is a no brainer. We got a great photo here. And the, the, the restraint that it must've taken the location manager to be like, everybody shoots here. <laughs> You guys aren't having a single original thought. Everybody shoots on this street, this street. You couldn't have picked anywhere more cliche than this street. 
Meanwhile, we're like, yeah, we don't want to be cliche, but it's got to feel like New York. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, a couple of wobbly shots. This is actually in China, some little town. Oh, this is the Deacon's Theater right, in Los Angeles that they make look a lot nicer. And this, just to, go, just to show you how poor my priorities are at this stage, she's running up these stairs here. We're using a iPhone to throw a little bit of light at her. Now, that's not the best thing to do here, right? The best thing to do would have been the same ISO trick before. Jack up the ISO like crazy. Expose for out here. And then get some sort of backlight as she rushes through. Right? We don't need front light. We've seen her face. We know what's happening now in the commercial. We're halfway through. We don't have to see her face. But let's make it not flat. So let's make it a little bit interesting. How does that sound? That sound like a good idea? Yeah, probably. Streets. We didn't have any permits for any of this stuff. We were just in the middle of the road. Like, can we pause it? Yep. Okay, go. The matching shots was a good idea. Again, New York. Here. Man, this is one of those things where... So we're in... I forget where this is. Shanghai or something. And we're running down the street. Now, one choice I could have made... Ooh, we didn't even get one in focus there. Here. Why am I on the light side? What am I doing? It's killing all of the shape being on this side. Get on the other side. Get on the other side where it's dark. Like, that's the easiest thing now to know. Right? Trust me. I mean, I had a whole career before I knew this stuff. Same here. Like, okay, why is this one slightly nicer? Well, this one's nicer because the light is coming out here. And we've got a little bit of shape on her. Like, that's better. Although, I probably would have... We don't have, like... Even if you just had one person in grip and lighting. Just, like, can someone... Just knock down whatever that prac is in there. Just to level of it a little bit. I mean, I like these things in the foreground. That's all cool. But can we just knock it down? Can't even do that. Same here. What am I doing? <laughs> so I want to see her run out of there. So rather than have her backlit, let's not position her in a backlit spot. And then let's front light the foreground action that we don't care about. <sighs> Man, mistakes were made. Okay, so nowadays, what would I do? Out here, boom. Hang just a tube and light this kid and turn off whatever this practical garbage is inside of this space. Just turn it completely off. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think this was actually, this is like a what, little veggie market thing on this road. Much like that thing is over there. But this was actually open and they were just being nice letting us go in there. That's one of the benefits. If you're in a country where you don't speak the language and you've got a camera, you just sort of play stupid until, uh, you know, until they physically remove you from somewhere. It's easier than if you speak English. Same there. Oopa. There she goes. More New York stuff. Now, now, why is this my favorite image from the entire ad? Because it was doing the framework stuff without even thinking about it. Like, it's backlit. It's nice. It creates a whole bunch of contrast. Contrast is good because it's more three-dimensional. Not rocket science. Okay, Palm Springs. This is where we had about two hours to uh, a layover at the airport before we went to Asia. So we had to f drive out to Palm Springs, get the shot, and get back in. And I think this shot here, again, imagine it's, we've been on the road now for four days or something, five days maybe, and we drive from LAX to Palm Springs, not the shortest drive. Uh, and as we're going out there, we're like, okay, where are we going to shoot? Looking to Google Maps. Okay, we want these, uh, you know, wind turbines in the background. It's going to be sunset. Which way on the road is going to be best? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go east on the road. So we need to find a road that's going east to west. Right? West, sun setting over here. We don't want to see the sun in the image. Okay? That means we have to really be shooting quite uh, south now at this stage. So we find that road. Find the road. Next thing, how are we going to rig the camera? Well, let's just hang out the side of a minivan. First of all, we have to order a minivan because we know we're going to do this shot. So you get the minivan with a sliding door. Somebody's holding on to me while the producer's driving. The director's in the front seat with the monitor. <laughs> and uh, we're just on some road out in Palm Springs. Now, we just happened to, I think we did about four or five runs at this. One time we got it in focus. And one time the camera didn't shit itself. And that's it. <laughs> right there. <laughs> that's it. My favorite shot from this entire experience. Uh, just a road we stumbled on. Just the right, like, flare as well. Now, could we make this better? Yeah. Yeah, you could. It's like, it would be cooler if there was more level coming this way. And there was more darkness on this side. But 
we're in the middle of the desert with a van. Like we're not, we're not doing anything at this stage. Okay. Next. Good on your boy too. That's me doing the drone operating, right? That's how bad it is. Uh, okay. We get to a little bit of tree action and this is where, come on, just get a little, even in here, like get a little bit of darkness to camera, get a little bit of shape and VFX pause comes the snow. Oh, no shape. And I think we're done. Okay. And off she runs. Also look at how much sharper this is. Like it is so much sharper than the rest of the ad. Number one, because we had diopters and this was actually the lens. This is the 80 millimeter. This was the lens that froze. So luckily it froze in the position, the focus distance that we needed. <laughs> so I just basically walked her into focus other than moving the focus dial because that's how hosed we were. Uh, okay. And then we're out of there. Ta-da! That's an ad. That's an ad where I knew nothing about the framework. I hadn't gotten that good at understanding what makes great images just right out the gate as a give me the basics uh, and shows you. You can still sort of stumble your way through and get something halfway decent that at least allows you to do more jobs because every one of this on every single job for those first few years, you're like, oh, I can take away one thing from that. I could take away, never work with a gimbal again. I could take away, never go out in the field without a grip or someone in lighting because one person can make a huge difference. These are the things that you learn along the way. Okay, uh, maybe I'll do some more breakdowns like this in the future. This isn't really like a lighting breakdown or anything. Uh, more to show you how bad I was and uh, that if you're bad too, there's hope for you because eventually you just get better and better and better and better. And one day you'll be able to talk to other people on YouTube and tell them oh, you were bad once too. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll do them. It's just hard. It's much easier to do on the podcast. If you want to see more of my work broken down exactly what I use and all the little ticks, trips, tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff, it's the podcast because no one will ever pull me up on sharing images on the podcast. On YouTube, it's a little bit different. It only takes one YouTube video for somebody from the client or the agency, whatever it is to get upset about me sharing this stuff. And it's happened before and it'll happen again, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, that's why I don't share so much here on YouTube. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. Many thanks. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.